Y'all had to downsize cars in 81. You're going to go to the, you know, the notchback, um, small, you know, Buicks and Pontiacs and all that stuff. Right. So the big giant tanks, the 442s and all that stuff go away. Right. Um, what was that transition like? Because the, I know when the drivers get to Daytona, they were complaining about how the cars handled and all that. There was a big fuss during the clash about the cars being hard to drive and the drivers were worried. It was a non-issue once the Daytona 500 come around, but the that you know we we have these big shifts in our industry such as the next gen car coming around uh this would be comparable um we'd been running these big boats the 79 monte carlos and and big old mercuries and stuff and we're going to go to the smaller cars um for you you know uh that must have been a big uh challenging off season trying to figure out you know how to be fast when you went back to daytona well when we first you know we was running those mobiles so we we ended up getting cheap metal for those mobiles. When we go to Daytona to test with Bobby, and he's going around practicing, and Harry Rendier was standing there beside me. I said, that car won't run a lick. He <laughs> said, well, it ain't up to speed. And I said, they don't ever get up to speed. Listen to it. It's like a flag flapping in the wind. Yeah. It lifted all the noise it's making. It's working against itself, and it didn't run. So I sent a guy outside to get, you know, a letter on the on what cars was legal for the yep. year. And he came back and had a Pontiac Grand Prix, Pontiac Le Mans. I said, what's a Le Mans? So we go to the dealership. Well, we don't have a car, but we can show you a picture of it. There it was, a fastback. That's it. Call the guy's shop, get the sheet metal, and build that Le Mans, Pontiac Le Mans. And we did, and then when we showed up, well, we went through Talladega, which is a big mistake, and they called Daytona and told us we'd had that in Le Mans, and, and they told us- what, You went to Talladega to test? Test, yeah. Yep. And uh, the, it was, they called Daytona and told them how much faster it was. It wasn't near as fast as they told it. Right. But when we get down there at Daytona and unload that thing, and- and uh, all, here comes all these guys, get them in a big town car and go out and bring Bill France back in there. See, I'm the only one that's got a Pontiac Le Mans down there. Yep. And uh, Bill come over to me, Bill Gasway and, and uh, Bill France. And uh, Bill France said, how'd you come up with this? I said, well, it's a legal race car. And I showed it to, you know, the media was all around me and they had already seen him what was going on too. So anyway, in the, Bulletin is fined by Bill Gasway, and Bill France looked at that, and he said, you didn't look at that. I mean, he chewed on him right there in front of everybody. <laughs> really? He said, you didn't check these cars out before you approved them? Well, anyway. Bill's, so what was their problem? Was the car too small? Well, it was a fastback, and, and nobody didn't want to run the against that. The rear windshield. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. Yep, slow. It was, an, it was a good yeah. car. So anyway, they uh, – Bill – Bill France said, well, have you got another car? And I said, this is all I got, Bill. And he said, okay. So we sat there. They were going to, they were going to, he was going to make you get another, if you had another car, he's going to yeah. make you run the other car. Yeah, in, yeah and when I his told him book, I didn't have another. But his rule book said that your car was Legal fine. as it could be. Then, then we, we just outsmarted yeah. him. But anyway, to, they finally found a car in Georgia. They wasn't one in, in the state of Florida and brought it down there and made templates out of it. Well, if we'd had that template that they made for it and put and build a race car by it, it would have been a lot quicker. <laughs> it was all in our favor. Uh -huh. So anyway, we got through inspection, and we they, they we got a couple laps on the racetrack. That's all we got. So when they so when you brought the Pontiac Le Mans to Daytona in 1981 for the Daytona 500, they had to go find a Pontiac and create templates for it. Oh yeah, a Le Mans. Had templates. They had to go get a stock car, yeah. a stock one off the showroom. And go make templates because they didn't have any. Right. Oh wow. Yeah. They well they finally brought them in there yeah. and we got through inspection and we got a couple of laps and didn't qualify. Well, what was worst thing done? We sat on the pole, so that irked them. Yep. So. <laughs> and it handled good in yeah. traffic. It was. It was a good car. Yeah. So that and and this car would uh, the the car would dominate, and then they would start cutting rear spoiler spoiler yeah right? they take a spoiler away from us every race we go to as long then we finally had to just give up on it eventually you lost enough spoiler where bobby goes uh, that's eh, enough i'm done i'm i'm i am got my hands full in the corner yeah. now yeah all right so this and, and so this mean this i've had this question ever since 
you go in 1983, so the, the Le Mans is parked. You, in 1983, um, now the Le Mans, uh, you know, you had built this car in 81 and brought it to Daytona and had all the success, and they, they start messing with the spoiler. You park your car. Tim Richmond also runs a Le Mans a little bit. Right. Uh, and so, and I think one gets sold down the line to J.D. McDuffie. I mean, this, you know, other people get Le Mans. It's not, you're not the only guy that ever had one. But you, uh, in 83, take Kel Yarborough down to Daytona with that fast. Well, the year before in 82, you know, at Talladega with Benny Parsons, you know, we was the first Y'all ran one. that one there? Yeah. You, yeah, we was the first one to ever break 200 mile an with hour. With the Le Mans then? Yeah. So, you, so when did you park the Le Mans? With Benny? In the middle of 82 well, season? Well, we at the end of that season we yeah. parked, and then that's when we got a Chevrolet, you know. And with Kale, we come with Chevrolets. Yeah, and so you bring that Chevrolet, that that um, Monte Carlo to Daytona, and Kale goes out there and sets a qualifying lap of two hundred plus, but he flips. All right, very very everybody knows about this, uh, very famous photo, right? And a really crazy moment. Kale's got the got the pole, uh, but the car is destroyed. There's people in the garage and around you telling you to fix it. And I'm I've heard this story before where you're you're uh, you know y'all we we know now that you go and get a Le Mans out of a you know that was a show car, um, but was the Monte Carlo fixable? Because that thing landed on the roof. I mean, it's bit the hoop bar down. I mean, how much work would it have took to get this thing back on the racetrack? Well, you know, leading up to that, when we flipped that thing, you know, Kel and I had never worked together before. We'd been friends since the Holman Moody days when he was trying to get John Holman to give him a ride. Yep. And we run around together. We'd go to the lake and water ski together, and his kids and my kids. So anyway... We're down there, and like I said, I never worked with him. I'd always been Bobby, Bobby Allison, Buddy Baker, and Kale. You know, all them guys, not Kale. But anybody run two or three laps, and you knew always knew what you had. Yes. I wasn't used to somebody sandbagging. Yeah. So forty-five flat was two hundred mile an hour, and he's out there running. Kale is forty-five seventies and eighties, and I think, what is wrong with this race car? Because the year before, we had first time broke two hundred mile an hour. And then we wanted to do it at Daytona for the first time. And uh, so, when it, in passing, you know, it was Saturday afternoon, we qualified on a Sunday. And Kel said, the car's okay. There ain't nothing wrong with it. He said, let me tell you something. He said, I had never been in nothing this fast. He said, it got enough horsepower down the back stretch. He said, it hits them ripples and then it spans the, spins the tires. But he says it goes into turn three, and it's like you hold a needle and me trying to thread it. And he's running 45, <laughs> 70s, and 80s. And I think, well, you know, what are you going to do qualifying? Right. But anyway, we get ready to qualify, and I put it down at 20 degrees of sport. He might as well throw it away because it's a notch back car, so it had a lift to start with. And then go out there and qualify. He bends it down some more. Yeah. Out so on the first road. lap, yeah. In the first lap, he ran a 44.70 something, and they gave me a tape on it, and I misplaced it, lost it. But anyway, the second lap, he's going down the back stretch, and in the wind tunnel, they told us that that car had run 203 with the horsepower I had in the, in the, in the air dynamics that it was. So he would say, that guy timing at Denver's round the track, he said, you think that's something? He said, 203 clip now. And then we went into turn three, you know, she actually flew. Yeah. So Dick Bate had picked me up on pit road, and we went up out the car, and it was back on its wheels. And that guy was standing beside him, said he jumped out of him. This one knows they break two hundred mile an hour. So we're getting the infield care center. And Kel's in there. They've got his top of his uniform down, checking him out. And he looked up at me, and he said, "He's like a whip pup." He said, "Well, you done everything right, but one thing, you didn't put the controls in so I could fly it." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well, I come back in the garage. And the first one to get to him is, is Bill France. He come to me and said, well, if you'll fix that race car, you can work on it 24 hours a day up until Thursday, and you'll have to start the 125, run a couple laps, and bring it back in, work on it some more. And then 
you know, here was Harry Rainier's jet sitting out there and Kmet Farm jet sitting out there and Chevrolet had got in touch with me but by then and said, anything you need it from Detroit, I'll have it down there in the morning for you. And Kale had me hire three of these guys that, when he was with MC Anderson. And so they come to him and they said, we ain't going to work on that race car. Three hours from now, we're going to be a happy hour. We ain't going to work Going on to the stuff. bar. Yeah, going to the bar. I said, yeah, okay. Uh-huh. So anyway, I was really aggravated with it. And Leonard Wood, I'll never forget, he come to me and he said, what else? You're not going to fix that race car. You've been, in, been on the pole four years in a row with different drivers and different cars, and this would be your fifth one. And you've got to fix that race. It's actually tears coming out of his eyes. He couldn't believe I wouldn't fix that race car. And the funniest thing, Junior Johnson walked by it, and his friend told me what he said. He said he looked at that car, and he said, anything go that fast ought to turn yeah, over. Yeah. <laughs> Junior, what a character he was. Yep. But we didn't fix it, and I've hated that. Was it that, fixable? Well, I don't know how much of the work it would have took, but it, you know, no matter what, we could have fixed yeah, it. Yeah, wow. You know how it is. We yeah. could get you make put your mind to yeah, it. You yeah. can make it work. I would have been. That'd have been but insane. That, but them three boys, I mean, I I always hated that I let them talk me in and not fixing that race car. The boys that wanted to go to the bar. Yeah. Yeah. So um, your Pontiac Le Mans that you that you set to the side and. Uh, it's a show car. It's over at the Hardee's across the street. Uh, y'all bring it into the, the y'all bring it in the garage, unload it. Uh, gonna make the best of it. Yep, that's all we done. Cause we just qualified at 195. Yep. You know, so it's down. But a what little I was bit. gonna say a minute ago, if we'd have been on the pole by 103, 203, we'd have been on the pole by five miles yep. an hour. Oh, car only for second. The cars on the pole was 198. Damn. So the 195 mile an hour run was the next laps the Le Mans would make. Yep. Uh, was that okay? Was that doable? Well, it was just put it out there and make a lap. That's, that's what happened. You you, but 195 ain't too bad. If well, that's yeah. the case, if that's the case, if you just like, hey, run, go out there and run and see what it'll do. And so y'all got to work on it and make it a little faster. Yeah, you know, it was amazing. Kale, I mean, he was a, he, he was one of the greatest drivers I ever worked with. Yeah. He didn't know nothing you about a race You worked with a lot car. of good ones. And he didn't he didn't care nothing about a race car. Yeah. He just let me in it. And he, he'd always tell me and say, "If you don't want me to use it, don't give it to me." Yeah. And if and and you know he was amazing to work with. 